international winners, the first of their kind. Fnatic right now is equivalent to Red Bull in Formula One. I mean, Fnatic just has like so much depth in the roster. This is definitely the best team of all time. In 2023, Fnatic became the first team in Valorant's history to win multiple international events. But when you look back at their prior years, success had been elusive, with just one finals appearance in two years. So what exactly was the catalyst for their transformation? This is the story of Fnatic's rise to dominance. As Valorant officially released in June of 2020, top organizations such as G2, Ninjas in Pajamas, and Liquid all acquired rosters in the EMEA region. But there was one top team in Europe that were orgless and didn't have the same financial backing as their rivals. That team was known as Summon FC. Our, our hope and our plan is some, like sometime, someday, we'll get an org. With player backgrounds in CSGO, Fortnite, and League of Legends, the team came together with the goal of winning the first Riot-sponsored tournament called First Strike. Boaster, mm -hmm. Chak, they've got a bit of high-level experience in Counter-Strike, but the rest of them are relatively unknown. They built this from the ground up. The coach of Summit FC saying that if they win this match, he will quit his full-time job. On the site, and Sender's got that spike down. Here comes the Bucky, denied in a five versus one. It looks like Summon have done it. Sender trying to hang on, and they will win on split. Summon to think what this means to them, players who had the idea of quitting jobs, the idea of dreaming big with this qualification. Someone were able to qualify for the $100,000 main event, and their momentum continued as they won two more series to make the final. About to do to them, Zipan walks forward, sees oh. Nova, but gets shot in the head, and Shao, the last alive, spotted a 1v3 to win, and Summon FC, they may just have booked their spot in the grand Finals, Summon FC, Upset FBX, and this one, I have no doubt, is going to be called an upset. Ladies and gentlemen, everyone at home, we have an unsigned team in the first strike final. Stands between summon and defeat and victory for Heretics. Oh, Jack and Booster in combination. Oh, oh Niso turns it around. It's all on Mystic. A 1v3, it falls to pieces. Heretics, the Titan Slayers. Ultimately though, they fell short to Team Heretics. However, a second place finish was very respectable, considering they outperformed the likes of G2 and FPX. You're competing at the highest level in European Valorant, not signed to an org, defying all odds. And it didn't take long for a top org to recognize their undeniable potential. On February 3rd, 2021, Fnatic officially moved into Valorant Esports, acquiring Summon FC. This gave them the support and the infrastructure they needed to continue improving as a team. And as LAN events finally made a return, Fnatic seized the opportunity. Down, you can feel the tension and you can feel the victory because Fnatic have done it. They've knocked out Gambit. Taking down the top Russian team in Gambit to qualify for Masters Reykjavik. The floor was now theirs to showcase their talents to the entire world. Okay, off Fnatic gonna be able to get over those nerves, right? It's a big point for them. Nation to the where the players of Sentinels could be. And there it is. Daff is gonna lock it in. Sentinels have bested wow. Fnatic in the upper bracket. After falling to Sentinels in upper round one, Fnatic made a spectacle in the loser's bracket, conquering X10 from Thailand, version one from North America, Team Liquid from the EMEA region, and finally new turn from Korea. Fnatic came out victorious in the lower bracket final and now have a date with destiny. Well, another date with destiny because they're going to be facing off against Sentinels again. Help Dapper as that wall goes down and this is beautiful. Just enough time bought there by that cage and now Shazam swings in. Sentinels are looking fantastic and that's it. Sentinels will win map one in Ooh. overtime. And Shazam in a forward position. Indeed, Mystic not expecting Hunter's Fury coming out and Dapper will take down Dirk. Wow. Sentinel. Wow. Pick up Bind. They pick up the map of Fnatic. Map two goes to Sentinel. Team Flash! The Team Flash! Magnum's in the smoke here. Tense. Oh my god! Oh, Magnum's got no HP! Not like this! Sentinels! They're gonna get the defuse! They've done it! Unfortunately, Fnatic's run came to an end as Sentinels were turning into a powerhouse roster with tens. Their wait for an international victory would have to continue. Despite their inspiring loser's bracket run in Reykjavik, this would be their only top three international finish for the next two years. 
At VCT Champions in 2022, Fnatic placed a disappointing top six. With this finish, they recognized the need for a significant overhaul. Mystic, who was part of Fnatic since day one with Boaster and Mini, was cut from the team. On top of the departure of Mystic, Enzo also had to bid farewell from the team, making way for two new superstars. Enter Chronicle, a former champion, and Leo, a rising star. This news sent shockwaves to the Fnatic fanbase, filling them with excitement and anticipation for 2023. My take is that I think Fnatic will or should win one trophy this year. As the VCT transitioned into a partnered league, Riot Games introduced a high-stakes preseason tournament in Brazil, known as Lock-In. The format was unforgiving, single elimination, where one loss meant elimination from the competition. But Fnatic's performances were nothing short of remarkable. They were able to win four matches without dropping a single map, making it all the way to the grand final. But their opponents were none other than the reigning world champions, Loud, who had the hometown advantage and the crowd support in their favor. Despite being in the belly of the beast, Fnatic seemed unfazed, as they took a 2-0 lead in the series. However, it seemed as if their momentum had come to an abrupt halt, as Loud found their footing to tie up the series 2-2. The momentum was now with the Brazilians, as they held a commanding 9-3 lead in the final map. Left untold! And it's just a collapse! Inexorable is the feeling! Loud with a 9-3! With the seemingly inevitable reverse sweep from the Brazilians on home soil, Fnatic's dreams of securing an international victory appeared to be fading fast. But what transpired next would go down as one of the greatest comebacks in esports history. Tap on the spike, Aspas! Jet Force, it's all down to Alfie. Noise everywhere, the double swing! Spray down! One round away. And the fight is over! 14 12, denying the reverse sweep! Fnatic, they pull off the impossible! Fnatic exhibited incredible resilience, clawing their way back to seize victory on Icebox and ultimately lift the trophy. For Boaster, a loyal Fnatic member for three years, this triumph marked a crowning achievement, as he had finally led the team to a championship, solidifying his legacy within the organization. The next step was to make the EMEA playoffs, and Fnatic qualified emphatically. Any idea where he is? Solkas finally starting to realize oh, it's a second what? crazy shot out from Alpha. The turret puts no, him in, and no, he finally gets the kill. What is that from Alpha? This could be the problem. Angel going to be caught a little bit here, and actually Chronicle, perfect timing, and Navi fall like flies. Chronicle, insanity. They will be yes. the only team in the entire world in VCT that is still unbeaten. They went a flawless 8-0 to stretch their win streak to 13. Another two victories followed the playoffs, and Fnatic booked their ticket into another grand final. Fnatic, the kings, the final boss, hungry to build a dynasty. But in a big shock, Team Liquid took down Fnatic 3-1 in the grand finals to win the playoffs, bringing their 15 win streak to an end. Fnatic finally showed that they were mortal. It was coasting, honestly. There, there, there were so many games where they got away with raw firepower and... Maybe they, they thought that it was not worth it. It was to, to change anything up. They're trying to go for back-to-back -back yeah. titles, which is something we have not seen yeah. before in Valor. Heading into Tokyo, Fnatic carried a burning desire to prove that their loss to Team Liquid was nothing more than a fluke with their sights set on the ambitious goal of winning back-to-back -back international tournaments. Tom has to tuck right back out. Dirk is doing well to keep him back. He's got two, he gets three! Z to try and follow up, but now down to the 1v3. This is a tall task for Alpha. What? He's the one to get for a reason! The two kills already needs the third. Draw it! Oh, the shorty! Seals it, signs it, delivers it! As they squirt off against the rest of the world, it was clear that business was once again running as usual. They dispatched NRG with a commanding 2-0 victory, followed by another dominant 2-0 performance against Paper Rex. However, an unexpected twist awaited them in the upper finals, where they faced evil geniuses, a relatively unfamiliar opponent. Yeah. The two unstoppable objects just colliding. Yeah. I mean, which one's going to give? Not too sure, to be honest, because both teams haven't really showed any signs of weakness. This unforeseen challenge caught Fnatic off guard, and the series went all the way to the final map, with a grand final spot hanging in the balance. Ten seconds now. They're working on the clock here, running it down so low. Boaster down <gasps> at 64. Ethan going to spot the cross. But it's Leo's right, Jordan! Oh my god! Leo! Leo! 
Was taken. Fnatic across the line. But despite this adversity, Fnatic's undefeated streak at international events remained unbroken, as they secured their place in a third consecutive grand final. Just one more series victory stood between them and a place in the history books. Sentinels, Loud, and even Optic Gaming couldn't go back to back. The time had now come for Fnatic to prove their mettle. And now there's pressure on the site itself. Goes again, Alpha's got him. It's down to two. Back down to a 2v2 though. It's going back and forth between these guys. Bolster spammed the entire round. Connects it, takes it through it. And that's back one in the pocket of Fnatic. Demonic, that's the start. Com going to take down the first. Upgrade found. The time ticking. Team one finds another, but it's not enough. Fnatic once again. And Fnatic, surely now, this moment is theirs. 40 HP for Demon 1. And they're just not letting him get that room. They're not entertaining the idea. Leo, the one to send him away again. As Fnatic's dynasty starts today. Back to back international winners. The first of their kind. Against the odds of history, Fnatic had done it. They were champions of the world for the second time in 2023. They look head and shoulders above everybody else. They yeah. don't just look like the favorites for the next tournament. They look like, who the hell is going to stop them? You're talking about one of the most perfect teams. At, at Tokyo specifically, like one of the most perfect teams. With the biggest tournament of the year still looming, now there was a new question. Could this Fnatic roster have one of the greatest esports seasons of all time? The champs group stage was comfortable enough for Fnatic as they proceeded to the playoffs without dropping a map. But the round one matchup was none other than Loud, who were still looking for revenge from the lock-in grand final. To do, but this is it. It's curtains for map one. Loud, fully in control. Not a chance in hell. Spike in nowhere, man. And Loud know it. They can feel it. A fantastic beginning to the series. Only Liquid being able to take down this super team before. There's one player left. Soon to be cleaned is. up. And Loud have done it. A 2-0. In a shocking turn of events, 2023 marked the first time Fnatic faced defeat at an international event. Their individual performances had notably deviated from the high standards they had set throughout the season, with star player Durka struggling to replicate his usual brilliance. The situation went from bad to worse when they found themselves in the loser's round two clash against DRX. And the time is not on his side! History is being rewritten today with a scoreline like that. An embarrassing 13-1 defeat on the first map pushed Fnatic to the brink of tournament elimination. Fans watching had to wonder if it was even possible for Fnatic to claw their way back. Starting to get that vice like grip on the go and it's down to just two, make it one. Stax has to stand and accept his fate. However, in a testament to their resilience, Fnatic rallied once more recapturing their form and advancing to the next round. We don't want to go out yet. We, we, got, we, still, got, we still got shit to prove, you know? We still got a trophy to win. Just when Fnatic believed their trials were officially behind them, they found themselves facing Loud once again in Losers Round 3. It's a chronicle, a quiet game from him thus far. Now needs to be above and beyond, and he's already dead. It's all on Leo, and he's fallen! Loud! Claim map one! Does Leo try and get ahead of him? No, he has to wait, be a little bit more patient. Victim found, as fast as Ben, it's all on counting. A 1v3, it ain't happening. We're going the distance. Map three. Durka trying to close up, but Cowardine's run it. And a pop flash towards CT. As Alpha and Leo have a 2v3 to try and navigate here. Cowardine closing out, it's all on Leo. As Fnatic face elimination. Less waiting, and he's got him! It's been 173 days since Fnatic broke Brazil's hearts, and now vengeance is served. Fnatic were officially eliminated. A fourth place finish following two first place victories was undeniably a disappointing conclusion to their season, judging by their own lofty standards. Fnatic just didn't have it. This, I mean, they were so out of what you expect from them, which honestly is perfection from Tokyo and from Lock-In. It's probably for the best we didn't win. Next year would have been a shambles otherwise. Their journey this season had been long and grueling, featuring in more grand finals than any other team. 
Oster acknowledged that burnout had set in during the final event of the season, leaving them with minimal time to adjust any of their compositions. I mean, we were exhausted at the end of the season, and I think we just need to find a way how we can use all of, of our energy on the whole season. This strain also took a toll on Coach Mini, who recently announced his decision to step down as head coach, setting the pursuit of a better work-life balance. While Fnatic displayed moments of invincibility throughout 2023, the road ahead poses its own set of challenges. The departure of Coach Mini and the inevitable introduction of new maps and agents going into 2024 adds an element of unpredictability, making it uncertain whether Fnatic can sustain their dominance for a second consecutive year. On the flip side, the potential disbandment of Loud and Evil Geniuses, along with Jing of Paper Rex being forced into retirement, leaves the competitive field wide open. The question of which team will emerge as the dominant force in the 2024 season looms large, adding a layer of intrigue to the upcoming year of Valorant Esports. We need to strive to win again in the next year. We have fucking five months of break. Other that, we can win two more international tournaments a day, but it better be champions and masters, I think. <laughs>